Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bikes and Bourbon. I'm Russ from Pathless Pedal. I am Toffer from Pedal Missoula. And things things are different in this episode. We are not reviewing a bourbon per se. We're going to be reviewing a scotch. A scotch, different for the for the connoisseurs. Yeah, different from a bourbon. And we're also pleased to announce that uh, we've got a new sponsor for the show, uh, Film by Bike. And uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're a pretty cool program. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool program. Going on for over 15 years now. Yeah. Out of Portland, so your old stomping grounds. Yeah. They, it's not like, so it's a bike film festival. Right. That starts, started in Portland every May. It's still going on. Uh-huh. But they've expanded their programming. And Pedal Missoula has actually reached out to them about doing a uh, bring in film by bike here. Yeah, so it's, good, it's, it's good synergy. And yeah. Yeah. What I yeah. love about Film My Bike, it's uh, if you get a chance, if you visit Portland when it's happening, you should definitely check it out. Because it's not just a film festival, it's like a bike film festival. So there's like, and then it's in Portland. Right. So there's like <laughs> extra, bike, extra yeah. bike stuff going on, you know, happening. Uh, they've got all sorts of programs. So if you're into like bike adventures, there's usually like a bunch of films about that. Right. And uh, what's cool is uh, Eileen. Uh, we've worked with her in the past. She's actually taken this model, this model of bike fun, right. and packaged it. So if you right. live in another place that's not Portland, but like you want, Missoula, like Missoula, or wherever, you can just contact them. Like I mean, uh, yeah, you like there's it's all set up. They're very responsive. I've actually <laughs> been working with them, and uh, we're getting close to kind of finalizing some details, but. Yeah. Super easy to bring it to your town, so just reach out to them. I know them. that like uh, Eric Cedeno from Bicycle Nomad, he's gonna, uh, he's working with Film by Bike to have right. something in Phoenix. Well, I think what drew me to Film by Bike is that they like curate the selection of movies, so you're getting like a quality block of entertainment, like bike entertainment. Right. So that was like kind of it takes the pressure off of of like it's a, it's a, a local tr- organizer yeah. trying yeah. to like do some of that logistics. And screening it and feeling like you're showing other people's <laughs> hard work and are they getting the recognition somehow? And like Film by Bike takes care of all of that. So you just get to show. Yeah, she works with the filmmakers, so clear, clear the show it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so t- t- turnkey experience. Turnkey experience, but yeah. Speaking of turnkey, you got to turn the key. You got to turn the key. Um, we have a bottle of. Pronounce it right. <laughs> Glenn Moringi. Mer- Glen, Mer- Glen Morangy? Morangy? Glen Morangy. Not Glen Morangy. That's how Glen he Mor- pronounced it. <laughs> Morangy. Mor- in, yeah. So. Scotch. Scotch. <laughs> um, that's why we can't pronounce it, because <laughs> just, just American folks here. <laughs> yeah, so this is a uh, Scotch. Uh, Scotch breaks down into Speyside, uh, Highland, and Isla style. Isla is a really peaty, smoky stuff. Uh, Space Side Highland uh, is less peaty. There are elements of smoke, but yeah, it's also yeah. Let well, you, you we'll let you talk, and right. I'll start pouring. But it's got different flavors. Um, yeah, it can be fruity, chocolatey, woody. Uh, this one uh, specifically, I think, was was finished off in a in a port barrel. Yeah. So there's gonna be some pointiness. Yeah, it's uh, age 12 years. Yeah. This is this is a nice like this is a nice one. Like, yeah. We, we, were... <laughs> we we pregame this a little bit. <laughs> um, Yep. That'll be the new. That'll be the new tell. Is like when we're when we're like, cheers. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good one. Uh, that'll be like, like oh, that's Never the one. That's the one we should seek out. Uh, yeah, on the nose, like I get, I, I get like a little bit of smoke. I mean, this is although this right. is like a space fight, it's not supposed to be smoky. There is like just something there, just like a like a campfire like two miles away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a there's a there's a forest fire somewhere near you. Yeah, smoke's really wafting over. Yeah, and like the, the mm. I don't know the color is really nice. The like, color is like it's like this almost I mean, that's glowing not, amber yeah. orange. Yeah, it's, it's a it's, really yeah. beautiful yeah. Uh, thing here. But I think it, like for me, like I get um, you know again hint of smoke, but also oranges. Raisin, kind of dark chocolate, so mm-hmm. it's it's sweet and velvety and cozy. I recently ate a whole dark chocolate bar. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's almost like I, a, I've refreshed a palate. It's, it's dark like, chocolate it's, every so often. I have to do that. It's almost like dark, it's, like if you're so. eating dark chocolate with like cranberry or something in there. There's like a oh yeah, you know, like there's there's fruity and like dark dark bit but notes. I will say that I don't like. That I don't like to eat like a dark chocolate bar with fruit in it. No, but this is like that, but right. it's 
scotch and it's better. <laughs> but, but that flavor, I mean, yeah. The, all those flavor profiles, I do see what you're saying. In a scotch, I appreciate it. Right. In a chocolate bar, Not I so don't. Much, yeah. <laughs> One thing that I've come to, to appreciate about scotch is like the, the flavor profiles are yeah. really wide. Like, yeah. like if you just live in bourbon, it's kind of like alternating between a American Pale Ale, uh, you know, a bitter ale, and an IPA. Yeah. There's like a range. Right. And then with like a scotch, it's like, you know, there's that, and then there's like the maltiness, and then like just all sorts of other weird things. Yeah, there's a lot of fun that can be had. Yeah. Talking about earlier, uh, film my bike. Uh, it's a great way to build bike community. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we learned later or earlier this week, one of our favorite bike shops that really was kind of like a focus, I think, of a bike community in Portland, Bella Colt, is shutting down. So uh, this, I, I'm not gonna cheers it, but to our, our friends at Bella Colt. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, a place that... Surprising news. Surprising news, I mean, I think for us and conversations that we had, I'm not sure how much we talked about Bella Colt on the show, but definitely since you had most recently lived in Portland, that was yeah. a touchstone for our kind of just conversations about bike shops. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's surprising because I, I think a lot of people thought that they were, and I don't think that they, they to be clear, they're not like they uh, were poorly run. Uh, there was kind of business happenstance, rental, yeah, from, from being the... a renter, doing, I mean, it's like things that were kind of out of their control as a bike shop that yeah. forced them to close. Yeah, from their press release, uh, well, first of all, if you've never been to Velical, big like space, super yeah. Talk about community. Yeah. <laughs> there's music. It's like a music venue. There's a bar area. There's uh, like a print shop downstairs. Yeah, they had. Think, it was or, home like, to uh, frame builders at one point. So um, yeah. there's like a lounge area, and you know, whenever anyone wanted to present like a new bike packing route or a, a, you know, a, a bike traveler was coming through town, they would always present. Yeah. At Bell Colt. It was such a, a cool space because you knew if you had like some wacky bike idea, like Sky would be would be game to try it. Right. Uh, so for I think for us, it's it's been kind of like okay, this is you know like the touchstone of, of you know a good community bike shop. Right. Because people can come in there, whatever walk of bike life they are. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. They, every, okay. they show the tour when the tour is on. Right. Yeah, so it's not just you know a certain type of cyclists, but they invite all Roadies, cyclists. Yeah, everybody can um, and, and from their from their official press release, it sounds like you know the some conflict with the liquor city liquor laws, like their requirements for the bar. Yeah, to be and and what would would be necessary to to change the space would be cost prohibitive. And since they don't own it, then it doesn't make sense to invest that yeah. type of capital in something yeah. that you're not positive you're going to be in for very long or you don't know what, what your status is. It's unfortunate that you know, even, even, I mean, I guess uh, people know long time bikes <laughs> favor and viewers, you know, that's the thing that happens in, in with like bookstores, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, or, you know, in a lot of retail, we think of them as these being kind of these institutions and right. um, whether it's, you know, something like Velcro in Portland where you just think of it as uh, a really stable kind of like you can rely on going there. Right. They're always there, but then even they are at the whim of kind of these larger forces. That yeah. one of the things that came out was the Velo Colt coin. Oh yeah, Velo Colt coin. Once they started, once they announced they were closing, oh, yeah. on Instagram, people started posting a picture <laughs> of their Velo Colt coin, and so that's not something I guess that they promoted that they were doing, or but it's like kind of one of those. Things that they made a limited run of them. Yeah, I'm not. And... I'm not 100 sure of the the origins, um, but we we got a Bell Colt coin, and Bell Colt, Bell Colt coin number three. Yeah. <laughs> of I don't know how many, yeah. but basically it was if you're a frequent customer, it was a, it was a great way to reward you. Like this would get you, uh, you know, your first beer is free, and then you can bring guests, and then there'd be you know they tally up how many guests you bring and everything, and there'd so. be some reward at the end. But it was a cool way to kind of incentivize, you know, people coming there. Right. But also to celebrate, you know, the you know the diehard customers and right that would go to, to show appreciation and it definitely. I think I had seen that on your keychain before, but I think it was kind of one of those things where it's not like an exclusive insidery thing, but right. it's like a it's almost because it's not this like widely spoken thing. It kind of it did become this like right. You belonged. You felt like you were. You were somebody who like went there a lot, so you knew right. what Velcro was about. And... It's a secret menu. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> yeah. So and, and that, that's that is honestly but, one of the things I loved about it. It felt like a clubhouse for for cyclists and all types of cyclists. Right. You know, yeah, like uh, I'd meet there with with friends I knew, but also like randomly, Laura and I would go kill some time there, and inevitably there'd be someone else sitting at the bar that was in the bikes, and that would right. spark conversation and. You know, yeah, so. yeah, it's unfortunate because I mean, one of the things that they're going to be doing things online, and it'll be interesting to see like how that kind of shape, like what that turns into. Right. Sky definitely, to me, so he started Fellow Cult in San Diego, right. moved it up to Portland. Now it's going online. He doesn't seem like he like is like, oh, I got stumped here. This isn't working. I'm just gonna like not. I mean, I'm sure he'll push kind of what a bike shop or. A bikey bike brand, bike, bike brand, bike shop brand without the bike shop, right? Like I'm sure he'll push that in really interesting ways. So it's kind of exciting. As much as it's sad to lose the physical space, it'll be exciting to see like what happens with Velo Colt. Um, I mean, maybe if you're not paying like the overhead of rent and all these things, you can you do get you, freed up to yeah, do invest, some, invest in other things. Yeah, so. Um, uh, yeah, that's what, you know, I did appreciate, like, Sky, you know, he had, like, this party trailer they would bring to cross events and everything, so he was, he was never short of ideas, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think this will be interesting in that, you know, again, like you said, he's not paying that, the capital overhead, they can invest a little bit more in, like, maybe a handful of projects. Yeah, so. Um, but it will be missed, like, uh, yeah. you know, Laura and I, uh, we were planning a trip to, uh, back to Portland, yep. and you know, one of our first stops would have been, you know, Bill Colt just to stop in. Yeah, and it's going to be sad to to not have that there. So kind of bummed. Um, and I think it, it, it like uh, on my social media, it was interesting because you know we 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 follow a lot of bike shops and like their reactions to it. Because uh, sure to lots of shops, you know, like Bill Colt was kind of you know in some ways a gold standard of. You know, cool space, cool venue. Right. Um, you know, had beer, had had interesting bikes, and built community. And if if they were closing, like you know, what what would that mean for for everybody else? Right. You know, so tricky. Yeah, but once again, thinking about it as a 2018 proposition, like that you're going online. Yeah. It's, it could be really cool to see. You know, I think that there's a lot of opportunity there to like once again kind of show people how to engage people through a web store or um, still hosting events. I mean, it's not like, I mean, just because they don't have VeloCult. Right. I mean, we, I don't know. Like, they still have the party trailer. <laughs> yeah. The party trailer is still out there somewhere in Portland. <laughs> Maybe uh, it'll just be like a series of like pop-up VeloCults across the country. That'd be cool. Maybe yeah. you can get them to Missoula. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, please. Uh, that'd be fun. You know, another bike shop that that I really liked, I only got to visit them a couple times, was uh, the Wheelhouse in Los Angeles. Mm. They were uh, based in downtown LA, like in the Arts District. Okay. And Chase uh, Tanner, um, he and his partner started it. And when you go there, it's this beautiful space. It was like two-story, uh, kind of open structure. There's a lofted area where the mechanics worked. Uh, they had this beautiful like staircase and bike handlebars coming out of the wall, and they sold Rivendells, and they're yeah. doing all the right things. <laughs> uh, but they they shut down earlier this year uh, as well, and um, it, it's a shame because it's a beautiful space. I love the concept. I think they, they, they might have been hurt by location, just because there wasn't natural like um, like bike and walk in traffic. It was definitely like one of those destination yeah, think, kind of businesses. Yeah. So they, yeah, they, they that shuttered. Could, that could have. They, sh they shuttered, but I think Chase is, uh, he's, yeah. he's uh, either doing some consulting, like opening up other coffee shops. It's a tough balance. So I think what we want bike shops to be, you know, as we've talked about these like third spaces. Yeah. And I feel like you have to go, if, if you're gonna do this kind of community oriented, you know, third space bike shop, that's got to be the intent from the beginning, mm. because like talking to you know people like Toby DePa, uh, people like Bobby Wintle, like all the stuff that, or even like uh, uh, Steve and, and Mason, all the stuff that that builds community yeah. doesn't lead directly to sales right away. Oh right. So you have to know that it's going to be kind of a loss leader. Right. But in the end, it's there's going to be other other gain. We have a we have a friend, uh, internet friend. I've actually met her a couple times, Arlie Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, she's starting. Oh, yeah. uh, a, a bike shop in Denver. In Denver. Yeah. And it's going to be uh, family focused, I think cargo bikes. Oh, yeah. And she's been in the bike industry for a long time. She worked, she was a, when I met her, she was a, a rep at Q, 
and um, yeah, I think uh, she, her, her dad owned the bike shop. So it'll be interesting to see, because she's been very critical of the bike industry, right. to see what her vision of oh, like man. a good bike shop is going to be. <laughs> you know, Don't open the door <laughs> to get me talking about family biking, Russ. <laughs> Those, I mean, it's an interesting model, some of those family bike shops. So uh, G&O, run by um, Tyler Gillis and Davey Oil. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the co-owners. And, like, one of the cool things is that they, so it's like family biking, so cargo bikes, yeah. things. But they do, um, there's uh, Holland Colin, who does mm -hmm. uh, trailer, who builds trailers and works out of a, um, this industrial space where he works with some other folks that CNC machine, right. mad scientist style, <laughs> amazing things. But they build like things that the bike industry isn't producing, right? F you know, like for families to get around by bike. You know, they'll like kickstands for like long tails and stuff like yeah, that. like yeah. kind of figuring out um, some of the new bikes that don't have like a certain type of you know rail yet. Like the company hasn't. To, like done that research and development, right. but then people who are riding these bikes all the time are like, we've already done that research and development. Right. That's what we want. <laughs> and um, I mean, it's another model for how you know a bike shop can maybe, yeah. you know, they're like literally creating uh, products that you know you couldn't find everywhere else. Or people can either think of their local bike shop as like a space to buy tubes, or they can think of it as, as a space to like buy tubes and meet friends and like I think like so that's like the thing is trying to not be a place where people just come to buy tubes or 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 like because or, tubes or, you should be tubeless you shouldn't right. even need tubes anymore or treat the or treating like a bike shop like a dentist like you only go there when things are like seriously <laughs> wrong you know like, my bike is not rideable anymore right. I'm so like, annoyed that this thing is squeaking things are falling off yeah. and that's why I'm walking in your door right yeah there should be um, you know, other reasons why you go, right. you know, or, or for, for me personally. Yeah, let's maybe, we were going to talk. Should uh, we jump into the rules? We were going to talk about rules and maybe we'll, I'll get a little bit of a refill here. Yeah. And we can talk. Um, it's rules. We've been talking a lot about the supple life rules. Right. Kind of. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't call them rules, did we? No, I didn't say maybe tenets or pillars of belief. <laughs> <laughs> pillars of belief. But you know, we like we both right. identified the the, the velo velo, velo mati whatever rules, right? And and, yeah, if, and if, if proposed. If you're old like us and you got into cycling like right. ten years ago, <laughs> old or, school, old school like or longer ago, <laughs> and you were kind of aware of bike culture. I feel like right, it was like ten. Yeah, roadie bike culture. Roadie bike culture about ten years ago. Yeah, there's this group that came out. In 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 some ways, the supple life and like the the cultural aspect. The cultural phenomena. Right. Oh, by the way, we have stickers for uh, the stuff of life now. Uh, soon to be, soon to have patches, and all this stuff will be on the web web store. But yeah, that's, people, that's why you can't buy it yet. Right. But um, yeah, in some ways, it's kind of developed organically as a foil to those rules because they're very mm -hmm. stringent about you know there's a right way to do things, there's a wrong way to, to do things. There's so and I, and by that there there's a lot of. Um, <laughs> You know your like what matches your handlebars to your saddle, right? Your socks, your socks, <laughs> uh, the height of your socks, right? Uh, the height of your stem, <laughs> height of your stem, uh, where you position your sunglasses on the inside or outside right. of your helmet straps, right? What helmet you're wearing? Um, so basically, the worst people. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, just like the people that make you feel like really like you don't want to go back to that group ride. <laughs> right. So we'll we'll show our rules really quickly, and then yeah. Phil's rules. So rule number one: don't be a dick. Two: uh, ride what and how you like. Yeah. Rule number three: arrows not everything. And right. four: have fun. Have fun. Very condensed. Phil has ten rules. That's which, a lot. <laughs> which is a lot of rules, and it's also a really round number. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so Phil Gaiman, if you're not familiar, uh, was X Pro. A, X Pro has his own YouTube channel. You should check it. I actually really like his videos. He's, yeah. He's yeah. got a super super dry sense of humor. Right. <laughs> so his story is, I think, also inspiring to like people. So he was like overweight in college, started riding a bike to like kind of just wanted to have like a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. And basically found out that bikes were the best thing ever, right. which we all know. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically like went from kind of just like sitting on the couch, overweight college student to somebody who 
worked really hard to become a pro cyclist and yeah. like not your typical route to like <laughs> you know pro level like he already kind of was maybe suspicious of right. some of like <laughs> these things um but my favorite thing that he comments on is that like he he was a pro like he raced at the highest you know at some of the highest levels you can right and people were still like that's not pro. <laughs> and it's like, dude, he's you're actually he is, pro. He, yeah, he's technically he technically was. He a gets pro. he gets paid to do this and race, and um, the amount of watts he can throw down is. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you guys haven't checked so. out his uh, YouTube channel, he does this thing where he'll try to uh, take KOMs on, on Strava. <laughs> right. Uh, and some of them, you know, are, are set by you know people that are still racing. Right. Um, his whole uh, pitch is that you know this is the fastest he's ever going to be. You know, like, you know, just being from pro to non-pro, right. and he's going to kind of chase these KOMs. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's pretty, the show's pretty hilarious, uh, but he came out with his rules. Yeah, these rules, they're good. Which, I don't know if he watches, he probably doesn't watch our channel, mm. but very similar Who's to... to say? Yeah, very similar to the Supple Life. The main difference, he buried the lead, he put, don't be a dick at rule number 10, and we led with that. Yeah. <laughs> He maybe did, I think that he just wanted people to know at the end when they right. left this, yeah. the last thing in their mind would be, "Don't be a dick." Yeah, I do, I, I do appreciate he calls out certain things like cycling is expensive, it's complicated, it's elitist, it's often sexist and racist. Yep, you know, and it's, yeah. you know, we like to think that we're you know you know two wheels, dude, we're all the same family, but that's that's not necessarily the case. Right. Um, and he does, you know, he touch up, he does mimic. I'm not gonna say copy, but like maybe homage to ride what and how you like with uh, Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah. With these. Hey, everyone riding a bike and being safe and having fun is doing it right. So I yeah. definitely agree yeah. with my what was my favorite one? Oh well. <laughs> I just like just to go over these real quickly, like maybe just kinda uh, wear whatever the hell you want. You're right. Right, yes. <laughs> Yes, so man. if you Thank happen you. to ride Dirty Kanza and you're not wearing a skin suit, <laughs> yeah. it's okay by Phil Gaiman. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Gaiman approved his hire, worn by Russ. I'm going to wear, like, should, 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 in the event we ever do another gravel event, I'm going to wear a yeah. Hawaiian shirt and says, right. Phil, Phil Gaiman approved. Right. <laughs> <laughs> seal, seal of approval. <laughs> uh, I love that. So some of these, I, I really, like, appreciate his his candor about kind of the don't be a dick and kind of right. being specific with some of these like I got a grand fond a grand fondo can be it's it can be competitive as you want it to be like maybe you're out there right. you've been training for it it's right. a distance you haven't ridden before that's great I love this so the group ride is a workout not a race <laughs> you should have no feelings about winning not winning <laughs> who crossed the imaginary line first for no prize or how they did it I right. mean I just think it's like one of those things like about taking yourself too seriously. Right. That this is like something that a lot of us do um, to like uh, blow, like have like a release valve for the stress we have right. on like a daily basis with family and work and all these things. And right. so when you start to like make <laughs> this fun thing that you've decided to do for fun <laughs> into something that you stress out about. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to say like, you know, like we, we did the, the Catch the Kansas videos and the mostly great comments, some really weird ones. Some of the weird ones were like, you know, you went there and you weren't racing it. I was like, you know, like, what does that yeah. mean? Like, there's no way I was going to ever keep up with Ted King. Yeah. You know, for me, it was always like kind of right. a, a personal challenge. Yeah. In, in, and I think for like, I would say 98% of the people that went there, they were, they were not racing Ted King. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Pedestrians have right of way, just to remind us. <laughs> yeah, that's good. To, that's a good reminder. And also, I feel like Phil Gaiman might be part of the bike lobby because the enemy is car culture. Yeah. <laughs> Phil taking a right. strong political stance there. <laughs> Transportational. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, I I agree completely. But right, uh, I ride I ride with you a lot. Yeah, you wear a helmet. How do you feel about helmets? What's your what's your take on let's I think I think it's personal choice. Like I you know, I choose to, okay. to ride it. Like if you if you don't, like I'm not gonna judge you. Right. You know. What about um, super wide brim hats that block the sun when you're fly fishing like Daniel had? That's fine. <laughs> we're, I feel like... know, we were we were actually if you guys go back to like way back on our, our web on our, our blog, early adopters of the brim. 
<laughs> we we went to we went to Interbike 2012, which is and like they were like in the basement, and we we you saw the brim and we're like, you guys are the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and they get, actually gave us the early prototypes of the brim to wear in New Zealand because of all the ozone, yeah, or lack of ozone, yeah. So like I, I can you know, I can appreciate that stuff. <laughs> Strava, I mentioned you, Strava. You do Strava? No. No. No, I don't have. It's, it's not, I, not, not your jam. I. Um, <laughs> I have stopped. I mean, I do not keep track in any way of any bike ride I do. Um, I, I use Ride with GPS to figure out where I'm going. How not to get lost. And how not to get lost. And like, if I'm using technology on a ride, it's to like figure out where I am and if I'm lost. <laughs> but otherwise, like, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, where, how fast I, I'm know, going. Like I, I kind of um, got into it for a little bit just to kind of track progress, yeah. but then it's after after the the Dirty Kanza, I think I was kind of burnt out on on metrics. I mean, what thing is he's not against Strava, I should mention. Right. He's just saying it's a way to share. It's a and social it's a way network. To keep, it's a way to keep track. It's right. a way to give people a thumbs up or kudos and like yeah. The competition should be friendly, right. not like <laughs> I'm gonna run over this toddler <laughs> who's in my way as I'm like reaching right. the finish line of this segment. You shouldn't base your whole like value as a human <laughs> right on your <laughs> on your KOM or, yeah. or lack thereof. Yeah, so check out. Uh, I think we'll. Link those are to, fun. Yeah, those are like that was uh, it was a nice article. Yeah, ten of them. We only have four, so if if you don't like to read as yeah. much, if you're into the whole <laughs> if you're into the whole brevity thing. Yeah. The stuff all life's for you. And we've got stickers. Uh. And a patch can be seen. <laughs> so. Uh, all right. I think that's a good place to end. Yeah, this has been. So what do you think of uh, the a Glenn, really nice Glenn Morangi? Sc- or no, it's Glenn. How do you pronounce it? For people who don't think like we don't do research. <laughs> we watched exactly one YouTube video <laughs> to learn how to pronounce. Whiskey Vault. <laughs> to learn how to pronounce this. And. Glenn Morangi. Five <laughs> five minutes later, we were still not able to say it right. right. We should have had nothing like to, ph- phonetics by the camera. <laughs> has nothing to do with how much we had to drink. We just which isn't very much. We just brought back yeah. our inability to pronounce. Yeah. Uh, usually it's bike stuff we don't pronounce correctly. But also scotch. <laughs> this time it's scotch. Um, yeah, so I, I like it. I mean, the more the yeah, more it's... you know, like we've been drinking and talking, like it's it's interesting. Like after drinking bourbon and rye so much for the show, and kind of just thinking about it and talking about it, yeah. that like to try to think about like what a scotch is is just kind of like it's different. It's like of, an undiscovered yeah, like, territory. Yeah, well, yeah, like yeah. it's different. I gotta kind of wrap my mind around it's it. It's like but, a, a whole um, like set of vocabulary that's not been used. You right. Know? It's not like this, this typical right. kind of t- bourbon tasting notes. Yeah, so next week we're going to have a, a special guest, someone that's actually bike touring, and he's bring, he's he's carried uh, laboriously a bottle of bourbon to have yeah. on the show. Yeah, I don't know. Don? I, yeah, I don't know anything, like, I don't know what else he's... Hopefully there's just a single bag on his bike <laughs> that just has bourbon in it. Right. And that's all that he's been taking across the country. Yeah. It's this bottle, del- hand-delivered to us. Yeah. Uh, super awesome. Yeah, it's a be, special guest. And again, like, we welcome really you. really fun. Yeah, we welcome you guys if you guys are passing through Missoula and want to take part in shenanigans or support shenanigans. Yep. Um, or maybe shenanigans aren't your thing, but you want to go on a ride or see... See some of the stuff we do yeah. in town. Go bike camping. Yeah, that, that was fun with Daniel, by the way. It was yeah. cool, cool to yeah. show uh, a, a guest around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Check out uh, filmbybike.org. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome, awesome organization. Great way to, to kickstart some bike fun in your community. Definitely. And until next time, keep the supple side down. Cheers. <laughs>